Hey guys, Sneaky Kitty Game Dev here, and in this video we're going to be covering modules. So just to begin here, I'm on just a blank 5.1 project, nothing been done to it. Now, to begin, uh, what are modules? So if you're familiar with plugins, which are up on the marketplace that you can buy and easily put and install in your project, like for example mine here, those are a form of a module. Now, actual gameplay modules are kind of the same thing, just handled a little bit differently. They're more on a project basis, if that makes sense. So if you're familiar with what I've been recently uploading, I've been uploading a Claymore tutorial. That Claymore tutorial uses modules. There's no plugins here, but here I have my actual project, Claymore tutorial, and my module, Claymore module. And this module has my actual Claymore code inside of it, but it's still separate from my Claymore tutorial project and all of its code. So that's kind of the general idea. It really, well, as it's kind of states by the documentation here, it really enforces good code separation because it literally forces you to kind of segment stuff. So you don't want everything in one place to have access to basically everything else. Instead, you really kind of want to set up features to where they are independent from other stuff. So for example, a door, you would want that to be contained inside of its own little space, so to speak, just like the Claymore. So what better way to, I guess, show you how to use a module than to create one? So it's really, like, really, really simple. So you would just go to your project, go to your source folder, and here we want to create a new folder with our module name. So I'm going to actually close down the editor really quick because I don't need it right now. I can click the X, and as you can see, my project is empty. We're just going to create a new folder. Let's call it iModule, and let's give it a better name. Let's like let's name it some sort of feature. So I'm just going to call it, I don't know, Custom Door. That's not a great name, but it works. So this Custom Door needs three files. It needs a build.cs and a custom door.h and .cpp. The easiest way to go about getting these are from your actual projects folder. So if we open up the project name here, random tutorial, we have our build.cs, .h, and .cpp. We can just copy those, paste them into custom door, and rename to custom door for all three files. So we have custom door.build.cs and custom door.h and .cpp. Now if we open the .h, where it should be empty, same thing with the .cpp, which we are going to leave open for now, so we're going to make a change here, and the build.cs. Now the build.cs, as you can see, we have the project name, random tutorial. We want to scrap that and replace it with custom door. So we replace both instances with custom door, save it, close it. Now, here we have our .cpp, like, kind of like the implementation of our module. So this is our project, and as you can see, it's indicated so by primary game module and f default game module. So we want to replace this with implement underscore module and replace this with f game or what is it f default module implementation i think change out random let me double check so if we actually scroll down the documentation page uh yeah f default module implementation oops f default module implementation then we can change out random door from well to custom door Sorry, I meant to say random tutorial. And then our include from random tutorial to custom door.h. And then we no longer need the third parameter. So we're not good to go. Let's go ahead and save that and close it. Okay, so we have our necessary three files. Let's go ahead and go back a step. And this is, we have two basically more things to do. First one, in my opinion, just because it's a little easier, we're going to go ahead and open up our Unreal Engine project in... Uh, notepad here and we need to add the module tell it what we're using so we're going to go ahead and copy the one that's already there so this is the default one basically your projects and paste it simply rename random tutorial to custom door and in our case it is a runtime module so we leave it the same and now we're good to go we can close that back into source we have our targets let's go ahead and open up both targets and we're going to copy this last line to add an extra module 
which again is going to be custom door. Let's go ahead and copy, paste, save that, paste that in, save that, and now we're good to go. All we have to do is right click, generate Visual Studio project files, and I'll see you in a second. Okay, now that that's done, you can see we have a new folder here called custom door, and it has our three files, just like our random tutorial has the three files. Well, the three files. So now we have that, we can go ahead and run. And now we're back in our project. If we head over to C++ classes, and as you can see, we don't have any extra folder. We don't have that custom door folder. So that's just because it's empty. Uh, it exists, but if it's empty, it doesn't display in the content browser. So if we go ahead and add a new C++ class, I'll just do an actor and name it, I guess, my door. And I always select public, so it splits them up from the header and implementation files. Then we have our random tutorial. We can now select custom door and create the class. Alrighty, it just ran through the live coding and all that. Let's check back here in our IDE and we now have our door. So we know we are good to go. So great. That'll just throw a fit. So if we go to, uh, for example, if we go ahead and make a new class, we go to our custom door.build.cs. We need to add another public dependency. So Let's go ahead and comma and add a new one of custom door, like so. And now let's give this a couple of seconds for it to do its thing. And if yours doesn't actually end up resolving itself, what you can do is simply right click on your project and generate the Visual Studio project files again. And as you can see, it's going through and it is now completed. So we are good to go, ready to go ahead and build and use our new module and its classes really in any way we see fit. Now the general idea when you're working with these modules is you want to separate them from your project. So for example, none of the code in my door is going to access any of the code or classes that are inside of my project random tutorial. It's going to be completely separate. And that's the idea behind modules is you want to be able to separate it from projects and other stuff and be able to just port it between any other project if you really wanted to and just keep it separate. So by that logic here, I have another, I'm going to go ahead and move the Claymore tutorial over to it. So here I have my Claymore tutorial, go to source and I have my Claymore module. I can just control C to copy that, go back to my tutorial source, paste it on in. And now the only thing I have to do is open up my target files. Just like before, I'm going to go ahead and add Claymore module as an extra module name. Oops. Like so. And go to our dot U project, edit with notepad. We're going to go ahead and we really don't actually, yeah, yeah, we can copy this whole thing. We're going to go ahead and copy our module, paste it in again, and rename it to Claymore module. Go ahead and save that. And again, generate project files. Okay, and once that's done, we can head back over to our IDE, and you can now see we have our new section, Claymore Module. And this contains my Claymore class that was created in that tutorial series. So, once we have all that, we can go ahead and run it. And once we're back in the editor, we head over to our C++ classes, we now have our custom door section with our class in it, and our Claymore Module module, I don't know why I called it a section, Claymore Module module with our class in it. So we can just create blueprints based off it, basically everything just like before, like you would any other class and you're good to go. I obviously can't create this because this is a blank project, but you kind of get my idea or what I'm going for here. So that's really the gist of modules. It's there to help basically, it's kind of almost a way to force you to write and segment your code. So. I know there's always going to be exceptions to this rule as people never cease to amaze me, but it's going to help make your project and your code better. But like I said, there's going to be someone out there that's really going to go out of their way to screw this up. But for the majority of you, this is a workflow that I highly recommend and I am starting to incorporate it into all of my tutorials as well as I am making use of it in my plugins. For example, with the plugins that is handled in a different manner but kind of the same. So you have your plugin, 
So my ultimate FPS template, if I go to source, I have three modules. So because I'm writing my new attachment system and I want it to be generic to be used by basically anything, I made it a module. So inside my module, I have all of my classes that are going to be used for it. And it's completely independent from my FPS template classes. So none of this code... <coughs> Ouch. So none of the code from my attachment system is going to be referencing any of the code inside the ultimate FPS template. But the ultimate FPS template is going to be referencing pretty much all the classes from the FPS attachment module. So that's the gist of it there. It's pretty straightforward. It's the exact same concept with plugins and is a workflow that I would recommend you move to there as well if you are a marketplace seller. But anyways, that's basically the gist of it. I hope this helped you and I hope this kind of at least somewhat gets you intrigued into the idea because modules are really not something that are covered much. Well, really at all. And it's something that, in my opinion, is very important and should be heavily used, even in small indie projects. Again, it makes everything cleaner, makes working on your project easier, and it just forces you to separate your stuff. But anyways, enough rambling. I will see you in the next video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patreons. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hop in my Discord and I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next video.